interconnecting to each other using this marvelous thing called the internet. Before we show you how to get on the internet... Oh, hi! I didn't see you there. You actually caught me learning about the internet. Oh, this shirt? Yeah, this shirt's super cool. It's available right now at Sentry.shop, and it's an homage to the creation of the World Wide Web back in 1989. Which actually makes me think of uh, kind of like the early days of the web, maybe in the 2000s, 2010s, when uh, people used to create like very unique and interesting experiences on the web. And the only way to find them was like on Stumble Upon or Delicious or Dig or various sites like that. Um, but it's actually not too different from the kinds of things that we share in the Syntax Snack Pack, which is a bi monthly newsletter that we send out here from the Syntax team. It always includes some links from everyone on the team of things that we found interesting. And a lot of times, the sites that we find kind of remind me of those unique experiences that you would find around the web. So while I have your attention, let me tell you some of my favorite links that have been shared in the past few issues of the Snack Pack. I'm CJ, welcome to Syntax. Now, to sign up for the Snack Pack or see any of the past issues, visit syntax.fm, click on the newsletter, you can sign up here. And right now, we're offering a 15% off code of all the new merch that we've dropped, including open source collaborations with Drizzle and also Prettier. And if you purchase either the Drizzle shirt or the Prettier shirt, $10 of that purchase will go to each of those teams respectively, so they can keep maintaining that software. Now on the site, you can see all of the past issues. There's lots of fun little things to find in there. And this first link I'm gonna show you is from issue number 12. And this is Bill's World, billsworld.neocities.org. And this is kind of an homage to a lot of the, the GeoCity sites that existed. Uh, it's fun when you click the start menu. Uh, some MIDI music starts playing. <laughs> I don't know if you remember when that happened. Uh, I'm just gonna refresh this so the music stops. But yeah, this is super fun and nostalgic. Uh, but there's a nice call out here to NeoCities. If you're not familiar with it, NeoCities actually started up after GeoCities shut down. They tried to preserve a lot of the old websites and they still allow you to sign up and create your own site. So you can find a lot of interesting things here on NeoCities as well. Now, the Snack Pack doesn't just have old nostalgic stuff. We also find cool and interesting sites that make interesting use of web technologies and this website was also shared in issue number 12 and it's called Montreal in Motion. So these are a bunch of photos that were taken in Montreal during the lockdown and uh, first of all the photos are really cool. I really like photos of, of empty spaces. It looks nice and liminal but look at the animation on this site. This is so freaking cool. As you scroll the image is kind of like you're inside of a box and they're scrolling within that box. So yeah this is super cool. Now, the next link I have for you is from issue number 13, and this is the command line interface guidelines. So we don't only just share nostalgic stuff or cool websites, we also share very good technical resources as well. So if you've ever tried to build a CLI tool, these guidelines are amazing, and they take into account a lot of history of CLI tools and uh, talk about good design, bad design, and the things that you should take into account whenever you're building a CLI tool. This next link comes from issue number 15. Now, if you've spent any time on X, you've probably Probably heard of this site. It's called Serverless Horrors, and uh, this is actually created by Andras, the creator of Coolify. And uh, anytime someone posts a tweet or something that talks about how they had to spend a bunch of money on serverless resources, Andras catalogs it here. And so this is actually super interesting to read. Uh, what could go wrong if you don't uh, add some alerts on your serverless site? So, for instance, getting billed one hundred twenty thousand dollars from Cloudflare. Um, or sending $11,000 worth of emails. So these are fun stories about people that ended up getting charged a lot more than they would have expected for using some of these uh, hosting services. Now, this next one comes from issue number 16, and it's called Lo-Fi Beats. And so basically this just takes some lo-fi music and plays it in the background, and then you can add some effects on top of it. So this is really great for just trying to get in the zone and working. So for instance, you could play like Lo-Fi Girl here and then add some fire and increase that fire and add some ocean waves. <laughs> so this is super cool. Uh, I put it on in the background sometimes just when I'm trying to focus or relax. It's pretty awesome. Now, this next one is actually a library from Atlassian called Pragmatic Drag and Drop. So this comes from issue number 18. And along with all the other things, we like to share uh, interesting libraries that come out as well. And so here it is on GitHub. It's called Pragmatic Drag and Drop. 
If you check out their docs, it's super cool. And uh, this is from Atlassian, who make the Jira software. So if you've ever done drag and drop in there, this is using that library. And uh, what's cool about it is it's nice and accessible. So a lot of times when you're implementing drag and drop, you forget about accessibility because users need to be able to accessibly like use their keyboard to interact with these things. So this is actually completely accessible and you get that for free when using the library. So they have a ton of other types of examples of like various like drag and drops that you might want to use. So definitely check out this uh, pragmatic drag and drop. Now this next link comes from issue number 19. And in the most recent issues, we actually started attributing the links. So when you get a newsletter, you can actually see who from the team suggested a specific link. And this one was suggested by Wes. And it is, did you know that HTML now has a blocking attribute? And I didn't know this, <laughs> um, but apparently you can add an attribute called blocking to any element, and this will block it from loading until the page has rendered. And so this article goes into why you might wanna do that and shows a few examples of it as well. This next link comes from issue number 20, and it was shared by Ben, who is actually the manager of the syntax team. And it is soma.fm. So this is actually indie radio that you can listen to right in your web browser. And uh, I remember the days of like internet radio and like Icecast and using Winamp and stuff like that. Uh, and it's cool to see that this continues uh, to exist uh, in this case for like indie radio. But it's super cool. It's basically there's a, a real di music director that's actually choosing the songs to play. So this is also nice because these days you're typically listening to like an algorithmically generated playlist, but this playlist of music actually has a human behind it. So if you like indie music, definitely check out Soma FM. So this next one is also from issue number 20, and it was shared by Randy, who's the podcast producer here at Syntax, and it's background removal completely in the web browser. So check it out. I'll upload an image here, and I actually use this for a lot of my YouTube thumbnails, uh, but what's cool about this is it does not use any sort of API, so there's no limiting. You don't have to pay for it because it's happening right inside of your web browser with Transformers.js. And if you're interested in learning more about Transformers.js, the developer behind it was actually on Syntax episode number 740. And uh, they talked all about machine learning and hugging face and doing machine learning in the web browser and stuff like that. So definitely check it out. Now, this next link also from issue number 20. Issue number 20 was really good. <laughs> this is a fluid type calculator, and this was actually created by Scott. And uh, what this does is it allows you to define your scale, define your base, font size, viewport size, for mobile, base font size, and viewport size for desktop. And then it will actually generate some CSS variables that you can use for your fonts. And you can see here, if I increase the base font size, you can see that the calculations here uh, increase. And so this is super cool, especially if you wanna add some fluid type to your website. Now this next one is from issue number 21, and it was shared by Ben, our manager here at Syntax, and it's an article at Encore.dev, and it's all about queuing. But what's really cool about this article are the animations. So they show how various things work. So if we take a look at like first in, first out, you can click this button to queue things up. And when you add them, they get added to the queue here. But this is FIFO, or first in, first out because the first thing added to the queue is also the first thing out of the queue. Uh, and this also demonstrates actually dropping requests. So if the queue is full, it drops any incoming request. And then they have these diagrams and animations for all the types of queues. So last in, first out. They also have priority queues. So you can add these things, but then you can add a priority task that gets bumped ahead of any of the other tasks in the queue. So this is super cool for learning about queues. So this next one comes from issue number 22, and it's about CSS becoming a programming language. This was a tweet from Leia Veru. And so this is another thing. Sometimes our snack pack will have interesting tweets, also sometimes hot takes. Um, honestly, it takes a lot of the work out of trying, <laughs> spending all your time on Twitter. If you just keep an eye on the snack pack, you'll find the interesting things that are happening on Twitter as well. But this was a tweet from Leah Veru that talked about how CSS is getting the if keyword, which will allow for conditional statements inside of our CSS. So that will be pretty cool when we get that. Now, this last link I have for you is from issue number 23, and it was shared by Ben, and it's called the Brutalist Report. Um, and essentially what it does is it gives you the day's headlines with no extra stuff, right? So you can see here all of these news sites like Hacker News, The Verge, Ars Technica, and then down here, we also have like the register and these are just the top news articles. There's no ads, there's no extra cruff. Basically, you can look at all of the top news stories and kind of decide for yourself what you wanna read and also see from a lot of different sources where all of these news stories are coming from. So this is super cool to reduce the clutter and also 
uh, reduce the amount of doom scrolling that you do when you're on the web. Just go here, pick a few links, and uh, you'll probably be a lot happier. So that's all I have for you in this snack pack recap. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. I hope that you sign up for the newsletter. If not, I'll be doing another one of these videos eventually and sharing a lot of the cool stuff that was sent out in the newsletter. I'll remind you, if you sign up in the newsletter, you can get 15% off your purchase of Syntax Swag, including all of these new shirts. <laughs> the uh, Blazing Fast Rolled Wide Web shirt. We got the Drizzle and Prettier shirts. Like I said, $10 from the purchase of either of these are going to go to the respective open source maintainers. We've also got the Sick Pick T-shirt and a few other things in the store as well. So definitely check that out. Now, I hope you enjoyed this nostalgia bomb and also a look at some really cool sites that we have found uh, over the past few months. If you have any cool or interesting things that you'd like to share, let us know down in the YouTube comments and I will see you in the next one.